Hey guys, uh, I've been reading a lot of things since the grand tournament has uh, come out about um, dragons and how many dragons should you play in a deck? Uh, what's the best number of dragons to play? You know, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people have different answers. Some people say seven, some people say eight, some people say nine, some people say you can get away with six. Uh, you know, and every person has their own reason. Um, what I want to do today, and this video is going to be totally about that, is let's use math to determine how many copies we should have of a card. Um, so no guessing, no confirmation bias, no, you know, this is straight evidence based on math. We're going to use probability and statistics to find these things out. And I'm going to show you how you can be, become a better deck builder by using these probabilities and statistics to help refine your decks. Um, so this is not going to be a short video. It's going to be very long. There isn't going to be a lot of Hearthstone gaming, if any at all. But it will be totally Hearthstone related. Um, all the examples will be with Hearthstone. And uh, yeah, hopefully this is helpful in some way. Um, if some of the information is wrong, then... Uh, let me know. I'm pretty sure that it isn't. I'm pretty sure that what I've created is, is uh, you know, 100% accurate. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it in a little bit. And what I'll try to do is I'll try my best to uh, put notations in the, um, the comments of, you know, when we change the subject during the course of the video so you can skip to where you need to go. So let's talk about hypergeometric distribution. Okay, and in terms of Hearthstone, hypergeometric distribution is what is the chance that I will draw a certain card by a certain turn in the game if I have X number of copies of said card? Okay, so I mean, you can think of this in a very basic situation. Um, if I want to see a zombie or a one drop by turn two, 60% uh, of the time, how many one drops would I need to play? Okay, or, or like, let's say, if I wanna see um, a zombie chow or a shielded mini bot by turn two, 60% um, uh, of the time, uh, how many would I need to play? Can I get away with just one zombie chow and two shielded mini bots? Or do I, can I get away with just no zombie chows and just two shielded mini bots, etc., etc. right? So here's a table, and this table is also linked in the description, so it's available for download for you. And this is just a, a quick hypergeometric table based on a deck size of 30, which is, you know, obviously the size of a Hearthstone deck. Um, this is based off of a table from a magic hypergeometric distribution from Ham Factorial, but it's been altered to fit the specifications of Hearthstone. Um, and we'll just start, we'll just look at the two main tables right here. So chance to draw at least one by uh, whatever turn on the play and chance to draw at least one by turn on the draw. So on the play means going first, on the draw means with coin, okay? So let's go back to the shielded mini bot question. Um, we are gonna say we want how many one or two drops do we need to play in order to have, uh, in order to see one of them at least 50% of the time by turn two, okay? So you can see right here, number in deck, this number that goes down, this is the number of copies of a certain card or type of card that you have in the deck, okay? The number that goes across is the turn, okay? So this is turn one, this is turn two, this is turn three, etc. right? And then the percentages where these things cross is the chance of drawing one of those cards. So we are saying that by turn two, which is right here, D, we want to have a one or two drop at least 50% of the time. So on the play, in order to achieve that, I would have to play at least four of them. So in order to have a one or two drop um, at least 50% of the time on turn two, I would have to play four, one or two drops. So that means if I'm playing Paladin and I want to, my, my early game drops I'm considering to be Zombie Chow and uh, Shielded Minibot, 
I have to play two of each, right? Now this can this certainly changes because you know there's cards like Knife Juggler. Um, there are other cards that you might play at the two drop spot, like Equality or whatever. But Knife Juggler and Equality aren't necessarily cards that you want to see in your opening hand, you know, based on the deck. So obviously, you know, the your 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 results will vary depending on like what you want to do. Okay. Um, that said, you can also say, uh, let's take a more fringe example with the same type type of deck. Um, Mysterious Challenger, Let, let's say Mysterious Challenger. Obviously, you always want to see it on turn six, right? So if you play two, which is right here, um, by turn six, you have a 50% chance of seeing it. And that drops dramatically by 20% if you only play one. And this is why you have got to play the max number, right? Um, let's take another example. A lot of decks play Big Game Hunter to deal with Dr. Boom. So assuming that you're playing one BGH in your deck and you want to draw it by turn seven, right, because that's the turn that they drop Dr. Boom, you have a 33% chance of seeing that. If you play two, you have a over 50% chance of seeing that. But, um, you know, this is where you make the decision uh, about, you know, whether or not Having your opponent's going to have a Dr. Boom fucking like 100% of the time on turn seven. And if 33% of th having that answer is good enough on turn seven. Now, keep in mind that Doc BGH is not the only answer to Dr. Boom and Paladin, right? You could also use equality. So if you run equality, let's say that means you have three answers to Dr. Boom on turn seven. So instead of going to one... We're going to come down right here to 70 uh, to three. And there you go. You got a 72% chance of having a BGH or one of two equalities by turn seven to answer a boom. OK, so there we go. We use just by just with this small amount of information, we can already derive a lot of things about decks and how they work. Now, let's go back to the grand tournament and talk about something a little more pertinent to uh, to deck building, and that's about dragons and dragon synergy, and and how many dragons do you need to play in your priest deck? Now, when you think about what cards the priest, a dragon priest, play, they're all typically the same, except for the endgame bombs and you know the fringe dragons. Like every priest is going to play Twilight Whelp, every priest is going to play Wormrest Agent. We're all playing Twilight Guardian. Everyone is going to play Azure Drake. Chances are everyone's going to play. Uh, um, Blackwing Corruptor, right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, assuming, assuming that you already have, uh, let's not even assume this. Let, let's just straight. What is the chance that you'll have a dragon in your hand by turn two? Like, how? What percentage would make you feel comfortable? And the reason we're using turn two is because if you opened up a hand with a Twilight Whelp and a Wormrest Agent, if you didn't have the drag, uh, another dragon, chances are you're not going to play the Twilight Whelp. Instead, you're going to hold it for turn two to drop the Wormrest Agent, or you'll coin out a Wormrest Agent. So that's why we're looking at turn two instead of turn one. Because with that deck, you can actually buy yourself a turn. Because you also have another one drop. You have a Northshire Cleric, right? So we're going to look at turn two and decide... What percentage of dragons or what number of dragons do we need to feel confident that we have an early game activator for our dragons, right? Now, typically you're looking at seven dragons. So if you ran seven dragons, that would mean you would have a 76.4% chance of seeing a dragon by turn two. If we ran eight dragons, that would go up to 81%. And if we ran nine dragons, that goes up to 85%. Okay, now here's another thing. This is assuming that we don't mulligan any cards. Now, every time we mulligan, that's effectively, or every for every card we mulligan or every card we draw, that is effectively moving the list down one. What I mean by that is like 
let's let's for instance let's look at uh right here we're looking at um six cards on turn two is 70 percent on on turn three basically what hap what happens is i'm drawing one card so my chance of drawing the card i need goes up to 77 percent it goes up one turn so if i want to find out what the chances are of getting a dragon in my opening hand if I mulligan everything, this is what happens, or by turn two. So let's assume um, let's assume the, the least, seven dragons. I think no one ever runs a minimum of or less than seven dragons for the priest deck, okay? So assuming I run a priest deck, I have a 76% chance of seeing a dragon on turn two if I keep my hand, okay? So if I keep Wormrest Agent, uh, and fucking Power Word Shield and Velen's Chosen, I have a 76% chance of seeing a dragon on turn two. Now, let's say I, I have a Wormrest Agent, um, but the other cards are, you know, like fucking, they're not dragons, and I want to mulligan hard to get the, the dragon. That means I'm going to throw away two cards. So that means I'm going to get two new cards from the mulligan. So this pushes me over twice. So instead of 76%, I have an 88% chance of seeing a dragon by turn two. Now, this is where the numbers get good, because that um, if I use eight dragons, that means if I mulligan everything but one card, I have a 91% of seeing a dragon on turn two. And for, uh, for, for nine dragons, it's a 94% chance. So right here... Uh, you can see how this is the strongest block of um, block of probabilities. Like 88% is, to me, like, it's so important with Dragon Priest to have a good start. You've got to have a one or two drop. You just have to. Like, you, you need to get out of the gate early to, to fight for board presence. So I feel much more confident with this 90% in rank percentage. Because you, you also have to take in consideration there are going to be some times when you do, your opening hand has a dragon, but it's like Ysera or fucking Chilma or something, or it's a dragon that has some crazy, you know, that's just really high, uh, high cost that you're going to have to mulligan back anyway, because you can't afford to keep a drop like that unless you already have the Twilight Whelp or the Wormless Agent. Okay. So that is why for me, I feel that it's imperative to run nine dragons because you really want to almost guarantee that you see a dragon by turn two. Um, you could get away with eight dragons, but seven dragons, I think, is just way too low. It's just way too low. Especially especially if you run decks that run Blackwing Technician um, or other cards that are also require the dragons, because then um, you need multiple dragons to be able to play dragons as well as keep synergy in your hand. Okay? Now, so what we did is we looked at everything on the play, and here's the other another table that's just uh, what happens when you go second. And just so you know, the tables are exactly the same, except this table going second is sh second is shifted one. So our percentage of getting a card on turn one is is one is equal to uh, this first table getting the card on turn two okay because because we draw an extra card remember on our first turn we draw a card for uh um for for being on the draw for having the coin okay so it's pretty uh pretty interesting to see um i don't know any other kind of popular examples um remember this information is so helpful and you don't have to limit it just to type of cards you know you don't have to limit it to to dragons or um, um, <clears throat> one drops or shielded mini bots. You can group in a bunch of different cards. Let's say you're playing zoo and for a zoo deck, you want a 90%. You feel that it's important to have a 85% chance of drawing a one drop on your opening turn without mulliganing. Then that means you'd have to draw play 11 one drops in your deck okay i mean that's a gross uh, overestimation because 
go playing on a play, you could mulligan three cards. So like really, if you just wanted an 80% or 85% uh, chance of having a one drop on turn one and mulligan everything to get it, then you would only need to play seven. Okay, as you can see right here. Can you guys see the cursor? I hope you can. So yeah, there's that. And then like, you know, let's talk about late game drops. Um, we'll just use Priest because since I'm so familiar with it, a lot of Priests play Ysera or they play um, Confessor Pelotress, you know, and some decks de decide to be greedy and go, s go slower. So, um, you know, both of those are effectively nine drops since you want to use the Inspire mechanic with Pelotress when you drop her. So if we only won one of those, one of those threats, we have a 40% chance to see it on turn nine. Now, if we run both of them, then we have a 65% chance to see it on turn nine. So, I mean, the, these are all things that you can use to kind of decide on uh, how many certain threats you play in a deck and when you decide to use them um, are also just different parts of the curve. Um, maybe you feel like it's important that 60% of your games, you have a four drop on turn four, right? Like, you know, you want a piloted shredder or a Senjin or or something on turn four, like a water elemental. Like maybe you play Tempo Mage and you, you want to make sure that on turn four, at least two thirds of your games, you're always going to see piloted shredder or water elemental. Um, then you come here and you see on this percentage, you want a 67%. Let's say that's good enough for you. Then that means you have to run four. So that means you need to run two shredders and two water elementals. And as you can see here, nothing here is made up. This fact, it's statistics. This is not uh, confirmation bias. You know, this isn't like, oh, in my experiences, in my 10 games, or in my 100 games of playing uh, Tempo Mage, you know, I found out that playing three, uh, three, four drops is good enough for me, and I'm seeing it 60% of the time, you know. That may be true, but in reality, this is the reality, the statistics. So I, I hope that this was somewhat helpful. Um, it might have been a little confusing, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me here. Like I said, you can download the table at the bottom. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching.